So, yeah. So now the first thing we've seen in Euro, the commercials, I had them more positions to the short side. Now, the people that don't have never seen this before, this is called a COT report and it's commitment of traders report. And basically, by law, most of the organization have to register the positions they're taking in the FX market and any other market that they're trading to the government. So to avoid market manipulation. And what we do is we piggyback off what they're doing and then we align ourselves with them because they have a huge amount of money and they don't play with their money. And also they don't look to make money from speculating in the market. They make money from their trade uh, in goods and services between different countries. So that's what we do. We tend to look at these guys, these commercial guys only. We ignore this. We fall under this, this, um, this right here non-commercial retail traders, you know, some small banks and all that stuff. But the big boys fall under this category. So we follow these guys. So what we can see is long means going up, short means going down, basically. And when you see it in terms of saying just Euro FX, we're looking at the futures. We're not looking at the foreign exchange itself, but just the futures of it. And we use the futures to determine what the market is most likely going to say. Yes, uh, ABC, someone's already said GBP USD. So we're going to look into that as well. Thank you. So Euro, what we can see in Euro is, Euro is going short. Uh, let, me, let me move that up here. Euro is going short. And, um, see. Next one we'll look at USD. That's what the USD index to say. So the USD index is also showing short right there for the commercials. We're just paying attention to commercials only. And we only pay attention to the changes. I'm only looking at this if it's just green or red, literally right here. That's what I'm looking at, the changes over time. I don't really care about every other thing happening here, but I just look at just the section alone. So here's the, then the next thing we'll look at is JPY. Um, it's still buffering. I'm just going to wait for it to load. You know, it's better taking its time. So, all right. Now, JPY, what we can see is they're adding positions to the long and the short side simultaneously. This is very tricky. I normally put a star on it because what you can see in the market is what market could go long and then could also go short simultaneously. So uh, through, throughout the entire week. So we have to be very careful. But ultimately, it is pointing long. There are most of the positions in long compared to short. And non-commercials also have positions in long. I normally like to see these guys should be the inverse of that. But, you know, uh, that's not happening right now. But we'll just draft what we have. So JPY is going long, but I put a star next to it because um, they're going long and short at the same time. Next is AUD. AUD also seems to be going long and short at the same time, but the difference is slightly higher. So I will still start that because they're not really uniformed, but there's still something good to keep in mind that they're going short overall. And then the last one will be GBP. Let's see what they're saying. Um, GBP is going short. Okay. So we have GBP going short. And this is what I'm saying. Like these guys are going short and these guys are going long. That's perfect because we're looking for the inverse. Someone has to lose money for someone to gain money in this game. So <clears throat> that's that. So the next thing to look at is the seasonality. And, and the way the strategy works is basically you look at a, a COT report, look at it if it's going short or long, and then compare that with the seasonality if that's also going short or long. And if they're in alignment, the last thing we'll just confirm is the probability. 
and probability will show us the exact pairs that we should go for in these assets because currently right now we're looking at them in futures terms so when we finish looking at them in the futures terms we're going to then look at them in the fx terms itself so next thing is euro uh let's look at it in order that we came in so the same thing down here euro usd gdp so euro at this time of the year we are the sixth month of the year 1206 what we want to see is what normally happens to euro around that period of time yeah so we're right here and what we can see is euro is meant to go long from now up until the 18th now as you can see this is analysis saying long but cot is saying short no. uh, right here it's saying long going up and cot is saying short so because of that it becomes a very risky trade and i just take it out of the equation that's how i normally do but some people with the strategy still trade it anyway but to be safe i tend to just not you know, I want to touch them if they're not going in the same direction. I found out that I got more wins if they're pointing in the same direction than when they're pointing in different directions. It's a little bit more stressful because then you don't know which one to trust out of, you know, the strategy. So the next one is USD. So with the USD right here, it does show long, but you have to be very careful. You see around this period right here, 16th, then there's a short coming. That's very, you know, very risky for me. I normally would not even touch this at all because it doesn't give me a, a good amount of movement, you know. But I will still put it there as a long, but I will start it up. It, it is a very dangerous trade. So the next one is AUD. So AUD. Currently right here. Now it looks like it's gonna go short for like two days. Uh, let me take it all out. I think I'm just going to look at them individually yeah, to understand exactly what I'm seeing. Yeah, so from the 13th on the, on the five years, it looks like tomorrow it's going to start falling to the 20, 20th. But from the 15 years, I think we have a different story. Yeah, it's going to fall, consolidate, well, ideally a downtrend. And then 36 years and also fall to about 16th, 14th maximum. So it is a risky trade, but it does look like short. And remember, uh, the AUD we got start because we have some going long and short at the same time. So it is a risky trade. It doesn't really look pretty aligned as I would like, like it to be. So um, let's move, uh, move to GBP. Let's see what GBP has to offer. Hmm. So we're, we're right here. We can't trade GBP right now until somewhere around here, 15, 16. Now, let me check on the 15th should be Wednesday, yeah. So this right here cannot be traded till uh, 15th. Let me isolate it actually. So we can see Clara exactly what we need. Yeah, so 15th. From 45 years, we should see GP going up to 19th. And then from the 15 years, see what we have. 
it says 14th even before that from the night but it says 14th anyway so you can be looking at that and then let's see five years yeah so between the 14th and 15th gvp is going long now because we're expecting gvp to go long between that period of time um and this already says short clt says short we're going to take that out of the game we're not going to trade gvp there's no alignment and the last one will be jpy now this is the beauty about the market and i presume i've said this before you don't really need to trade every time. If anything doesn't align the way you want it, just let it go. You always have another week. You know, the market is always open, you know, practically almost every day of the year. So if there's not an opportunity in one week, there would definitely be the next week. And if not, the week after that, you should find something. And sometimes you might not find something for a month. But that's how the game goes. You have to select, you have to be selective in what you pick, unless you end up losing a lot of money. Remember, the market is like a big casino. So the odds is always in their favor and you only want to play when the odds are in your favor. Okay. So this, I'm going to also isolate it, make it smaller so I can see exactly what I'm looking at. We're expecting JPY to go long according to the COT report, right? So what we can see right here from the five years doesn't look encouraging. It's going to peak out on the fourth and i always like at least to have three days movement i don't like short short term moves short term moves doesn't pay that well you need bigger moves to make big money uh, 15 years look like it's gonna go till the 17th and 44 years look like the 13 to 17. The only thing we don't really have a line is the five years. The five years doesn't really support this. So this becomes automatically a high risk trade. Only has two days till the 14th, right there. An entry would be tomorrow. So it's like two days entry. Okay. So, um, I'm going to start as well. Okay, so what we have so far, we have USD, we have AUD, and we have JPY. All three are on stars. So automatically, they're on the iris trade out of all the trades that was picked out. They're already looking like an high risk trade. I personally can trade high risk, but I presume a lot of people here does not want to risk, you know, trading assets that are, that are really high risk at the moment. So um, if you have the balance for it and you know how to manage your money perfectly, you know, you can give it a shot. If not, I just say stay away from it, you know. So the AUD is also a good thing. I'm just going to write the data out for more Just for reference sake, and then USD. Let me see, there's the go. Oh, okay. So USD is probably, we got a 12 till, 15. Okay, so that's all done for the seasonality. And there's other assets we can look into. We can look into the NZD, we can look into gold. You know, we can actually see what other assets are saying, but from the ones you've currently selected, I've just gone through them and filtered out the assets that would not be in play. So we know for a fact that Euro would not be in play with that. GBP will not be in play uh, with that as well. But what we can see is we still have USD, AUD and JPY in play, but they're high risk trade. So it's something you have to be very careful about. 
uh, gold. I just, just wanted to look at something different for a little while. Yeah, gold doesn't really look in alignment either, so I'm just gonna let that be. So let's go to check. Hello, U USD showing short on the COT report. Yes. Yeah, but it's not aligned with the seasonality. Oh yeah, my but bad. Thank you very much. I'll take that uh, out. Thank you very much. I'll take that out. So we only have AUD and JPY in alignment. Thank you. So what we can then do is cross-reference all the AUD assets and then the JPY assets. So if we go AUD, just, just gonna open all the AUD assets in, in your tab. And you know the funny thing, right? AUD is saying short right here, JPY is saying long right here. If we look into the, the probability and AUD JPY is actually saying short on the days that we have here, then it would be a much, much safer asset to go for. But we'll check that in a second. So um, your AUD that, and also when an asset is not in alignment, like the COT and the seasonality is not in alignment and you find an asset that is in alignment, what you can do is you have a better chance of winning that trade when you trade it against an asset that's already in alignment. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And for the person I pointed out the error that I made, thank you very much, really appreciate that. All right. So we look at the sixth AUDCHF first. So we have six, which is June. And what we want to look for is three days that the asset is going to be in our favor. So from the 13th, we don't have, we really have 3%. Then the day after that, it drops and then it goes up 50 50, then up and down. For that reason, I would not trade AUDJPY. I need three days in alignment showing me exactly that the market's going to move you know, in my favor for those three days. And once I find those three days, then I then trade those days in the market. So the next thing to do is ADJPY. Now, ADJPY, we're expecting AD to go short and JPY to go long. But what we can see here from this side, from the probabilities telling us that AD is most likely gonna go long, you know, for three days and then drop and then go off. So because of that, we won't trade it. If we have seen AED going short for three days, then long, then that will have been a good trade for us to go into. But because of this, I am very, very skeptical to jump into the asset. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let this slide, AED JPY slide. The next thing we're gonna look at is the Euro uh, probability, Euro AED. All right, let's see. Okay, find that. Okay. So, Euro AUD is saying long, long, long. So, we have three days going long and then short and long. So, the first trade we actually have, or well, keep in mind because Euro wasn't properly aligned, the first trade we have is. Euro AUD, because AUD is pointing short, and if Euro is going long, then we have a very decent chance of, um, of winning that trade. So Euro AUD, long. Okay. Now, this is where it gets tricky because we have a pullback on Thursday, but Friday we go long. We can actually do 13th or 17th. So the entire week we can actually trade this if we wanted to. But keep in mind, this is still going to be a high risk trade because Euro wasn't fully in line and AUD is a little bit iffy on the seasonality. Your safest exit would be the, I think, I think. 15, it will be the 15th. Mm, yeah. Oh. Oh. Or something. Yeah, so your safest entry exit will be 15th. But if you want to go all the way, you can go to 17th. Or you can come on at 15th, wait for a pullback, and then go back in. So that would be another one. 
to look another way to look at it basically and well, next thing we're going to look at is AUD USD. Um, so AUD USD doesn't really look too well. Gives like a little down and up and down, down and 50-50. So just gonna let that go. Even though it might actually move in the favor that we want it, like AUD might lose that strength. I just wanted to keep it safe. It's already looking risky already. So it's best to keep it properly safe. Then the next thing to look at is AUD CAD ends buy, sell, buy, sell. I don't like that. Take that out of the equation. All I'm doing here, guys, is just basically finding something that really aligns with the way I trade and shifting the, the, the odds in my favor. So same thing here on 13th, 50-50, down, up, down, down. I'm just going to take that out. I mean, some people could ride that roller coaster if you want, but let's keep it safe. All right, so. Yeah, this one has 50-50, 50-50. I wasn't sure, but then looked like it's going to get some strength. This could be a good trade, but I wouldn't put it down, but it could actually work out. But I just... I don't really like the fact that it's 50-50. I would rather prefer it to be 51% or 52% than it being 50-50. So GP AUD could work, but I am not trading that. Um, so out of the entire AUD pair, we only had one asset that is in alignment, which is Euro AUD. Then we check the JPY here and, and see what we can find as an alignment. Now we've already ran AED JPY, so we don't really need to check AED JPY again. Um, we can just go straight up to CHF JPY. Now with CHF JPY, same concept apply. We're looking for entry around the 13th. Uh, 13th uh, exit on 14th or 17th. So these are short term trades that I don't really like to trade, but it could be, you know, worth it sometimes. So we're looking for a JPY to go long. And what we can see here, CHF JPY goes long, then 50 50 and all of that. So we don't take this because JPY is meant to go long, but CHF seems to be the one that's gaining strength right here. For that reason, we take out CHF JPY out of the list. Next, we look at Euro JPY. Uh, um, so, see what we can find. Um, so, we're expecting JPY to gain strength. Remember, on the JPY one, it does look like it's going to go long and short on the COT report simultaneously. Now, what could play out is Euro could actually gain strength against the JPY because Euro seems to be getting, could gain strength against the AUD anyway. So that could happen, but because we don't fully have that alignment as we wanted on JPY, I wouldn't let us take this trade. It wouldn't be of good use for us to take it, but it looks like a, a very good trade to take if I wanted to go along, but I just don't want to risk it. So I'm going to let that also go. Next, we'll look at USD JPY. We're just looking for an alignment again, showing that JPY is going to gain some strength this week coming. And from USD JPY, it doesn't really look like that neither. You know, JPY seems to be losing strength across the entire board. CCAD JPY. All right, so CAD JPY seems to be a little bit in our favor. So it, it's going to start losing strength from the 14th all the way to the 16th. Now, keep in mind, our entry is meant to be the uh, 13th. And we should exit on the 14th or the 17th. So keep in mind, this is a very high risk. I would literally call it super high risk, but uh, it might be worth it. 
So if I use good money management and you stick to the rules of using your ATR, you'll be perfectly fine. You won't have any issues with that. Uh, so you can go in on the 14th and exit 16th. Uh, I'm going to call the super high risk. So it's a super high risk trade. Now, keep in mind, you have to use your own personal analysis, your own money management, your own uh, uh, technical analysis, and any other analysis that you do to run this. You know, can JPY short or long? Uh, JPY is meant to be, oh, for this one. Uh, it, it's short. This is meant to be short. Yeah, that, that's meant to be short. Just going down. Uh, it's right here. So yeah, so you do your, your, your analysis uh, in terms of technicals to see exactly what could be more beneficial to you direction-wise and when will be your best entry time to go into it. Well, as far as I can do it, I can show direction. I can show um how long you should go for but we might not have time to see exactly where our entry is going to be so next thing to look at is gbp jpy so gbp jpy wait am i seeing oh, that's 52 uh, percent gbp jpy is going long and we're expecting jpy to go long so we would have to take this out of the equation because ideally if jpy goes long gbp should go short and the last one would be SZDJPY. Okay. NZDJPY is going long. We want it to go short. So we want to really trade this neither. So out of the entire analysis, so if I'm not mistaken, I've ran about uh, six, seven, about 14 pairs right now. And out of the 14, can only find two that's alignment, Euro AUD and CAD JPY. I think I can find uh, them right here. Let me try to look for Euro AUD. Apologies, this thing stacked up in a way that I can't. Oh, here we go. So Euro AUD. So with this one, we expect the Euro AED to go long. Now, because the William also is pointing slightly long anyway, so that, that's a good sign for me. And price seems to have left. If you look at, let me just see if I can point out. See this zone right here? That's where price left, came back to retest that zone left. New zone right here. Price came, left the zone, came back to retest left. New zone right here. Price left the zone, came back for retest. Now left, new zone right here. So price came to retest, now rejected. Most likely we're gonna see this asset go up as expected anyway. So it's kind of on a trend moving up. Uh, I don't really do trend lines that much. So, but what we can see broker trend line right here. So that trend line is already out of the equation. Now the next trend line should be, um, apologies, should be somewhere around here. That would be here, that would be somewhere around here. Well, that's already done, next one's here. So if I have to go on a smaller time frame to find the exact one that, that would be needed. Yeah, so it would be somewhere around here. So with these assets, for example, if you look at it on the four hour time scale, you can see stock between the 200 EMA and the 50 and 20. That's where price closed. So price could come down, lower down, or price could go up, or price could start from the same place. If price start from the same place, you have to wait for price to consolidate and break above the 200 before they even consider going into the straight. So the asset is meant to go long and the entry date will be 13th. I mean, you have to do your own. You know, analysis further analysis for this one so to be sure exactly what you need to do but if you if we're looking at this asset we can go in from the 13th and ride that to the 17th now fingers crossed our take profit will be somewhere on the 200 ema ideally that would be where i would like the asset to get to 
uh, 200 EMA in which, so I'm using the mouse on the laptop, so it's, it's very annoying to try to press it. So ideally we should have about 300 pips to collect from this, but all else fails at least price should do uh, here, minimum. So at least 200 and some pips to collect from that one. So if you go in and exit, um, if you exit on Friday, you might get to 200. If you exit on Wednesday, we might get here. But you you know the rules. I don't know if you guys can remember, but always use your ATR. So if you go insert indicator, average true range, it will tell you what the average value is for the past, you know, um, 14 days. And then you can do that figure times 1.5, you know, whatever you, you feel. So currently right now it's at 136 pips. If you go on a smaller time frame like the four hours, it gives you about six to three pips. So you can use that for your stop loss if you want, you know, all times about 1.5. But keep something in mind. This is one thing I want you guys to keep in mind. Go in on the wick, on the wick of the candle. You see this tails, this small tails right here. Wait for price to open, then pull against the market first before you consider going in. Because at that point, you sign a better chance of getting a better entry than if, if the price open and you go in or if the body of the candle is already forming and you go in. You want it to pull against where you want it to go first before you then go in, because then what that does is it gives you a better entry position and it ensures that your stop loss will not be wide. Okay, so that would be the, you know, this one. So if you want to be safest when you go into the trade, wait for price to go above the 50 EMA right here, come back and retest it, then you go long. Or alternatively, wait for price to break above the 200 EMA, come back, retest it, or go long. And if you want to choose your safest option, wait for price to go below, all the way down, maybe somewhere around here before you even start considering looking for your entry to go long. I mean, there, there are a few support, support points around here. There's one right here, which price has already retested and left. And uh, let me see if I go on a one hour time frame. I normally don't like going that low, but um, here would also be a good option right here. Down here would be a good option because that's the support region price broke away from. And then price is gonna go there because when you see price break away from somewhere like this, it comes back, retest that region. Broke away, would always come back, retest that region, you know? And there is no much consolidation right here, but if you look at it, it did retest and go a little bit up till price broke back down, retest this region, but it hasn't retested it again, second time. It has to retest this part again for the second time. But for, for this analysis sake, I don't think we need to wait for price to get back down here. So somewhere around here will be sufficient for price to start kick off and then, you know, start going. So that would be the one for Euro AUD. And let me see, I got like a minute left. Uh, CAD JPY, if I can see if I can find a technical for CAD JPY. Yeah, there we are. Uh, that's actually the William is pointing long on the four hours. Let me check on the daily. Yeah, we're looking for short. So for the William, William has already pointed short. I mean, it's looking back up right now, but it's pointed short for a while. And this asset, I don't think it's completely short. So just by looking at it, your first take profit will be about a 20 EMA right here. Second take profit will be somewhere around here. So if we're going short, and we're going short from the 14th, wait for price to go back and retest here. Minimum, price has to retest this spot right here. Somewhere around here. And then when price retests that, does its tail because ideally price will be pulled against it. So if you get your entry for somewhere around here, you'll be safer when price goes all the way down. So that's all I have for you guys today. I mean, sure, make sure you use your money management rules and your ATR. So that out and be careful when you go into the trade because these are high risk trade, but the reward could be very beautiful. So thank you very much for attending today's webinar, guys, and God bless you all. I will catch you in this week trading. Okay. Take care, guys, and have a lovely week ahead. Thank you.